Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, today's video I'm going to be talking about convention swag. Alright, and I'm going to make the argument that it is important not only to promote the convention itself, but also to promote the hobby. So uh, as you can see, I go to quite a few conventions uh, every year. Now my convention season runs from September to June. Uh, as a retired school teacher, that kind of fits in with my uh, mentality of, you know, September to June is the, is the year. And it just so happened to turn out to be my convention year as well because uh, I tend to be on vacation during the, uh, during the summer months and, and I have yet to go to a convention in July or August. So, um... My convention season begins with ShireCon, and ShireCon uh, was actually the first in-person convention I had gone to. Uh, that would have been in 2023, and um, this year was my third, uh, so maybe it was actually 2022 that I went in person for the first time, and uh, that is... Uh, that was filling in a gap that I had not gone to a gaming convention prior to that, uh, going all the way back to 1985, Gen Con 18. So uh, it was a long, long drought. Uh, now I've gone to other conventions like Comic Cons and, and things like that, but, um, but getting back into tabletop role playing and the convention scene opened up uh, more locally for me, and so I started going to local conventions. And that is a very, very close convention to me. That is only uh, 55 minutes away uh, by drive, so super, super uh, easy to go to. This was my third time going to ShireCon, and uh, uh, you know this past uh, this past September, and it was a great experience. So my next one. Uh, was originally Rising Phoenix, which is in April, but I have now, starting la this year, January, I went to my first uh, Philadelphia Area Game Expo, and you can see the card right there. It says 2024, and Richard, uh, I blanked out the other details, uh, but 2024, uh, went there. I was there for Friday and Saturday. Unfortunately, I had to leave early on Saturday because of a snowstorm. Crossing my fingers and hoping that this year we don't have any issues like that, but I am going to uh, damn the torpedoes and just stay the entire convention long from Thursday night through Sunday morning and depart Sunday morning uh, hell or high water. So, um, so that was my convention. The only thing I have from that was the t-shirt the that I got uh, back in January. And unfortunately, that t-shirt got ruined in the, you know, during the, the last couple of months. And, you know, just can't wear it anymore. It's just too, too stained and, and too messy. Um, so, but I replaced my, my convention t-shirts every year anyhow. So, um, so... The next one in January, I'm certainly going to get a new t-shirt. Uh, so that was my second. And then my third, which is my normal, uh, is uh, Rising Phoenix, and that is in uh, Massachusetts. And as you can see by Rising Phoenix, uh, so that's on this black box here that you can see, along with some of the other uh, things. So Rising Phoenix was really the first one that gave like a lot of other little swag items to have. So not just this sticker that you see on the black box here. You know, I can I can show you it's it's this right here. But these two tags here, and I've been to two of them so far. These two pins is uh is a GM level number one, which meant that I have uh, I game mastered at a convention, and then GM level two is I have game mastered at my second convention and they keep track of those things. So that's really cool. Um, so my next one this April will be level three. Uh, as you can see, you get a, uh, you get a, pa a badge like every place else that marks you clearly as a game master. Uh, and then 
They also give you these, uh, these black tickets, all right? So these are tickets that you can then exchange for items in the, uh, in the item shop, in the treasure trove. Uh, and so uh, I usually give one of these out uh, or more than one of these out to my players at the tables and then I will keep uh, a couple of them myself plus any games that I play in if I earn them as a player then I will take them and I usually purchase something left. These carry over to any other year going beyond that so you can store them as you can see I have two left over from last year and so uh, hopefully this upcoming year I'll end up with you know a handful more and then I can uh, you know maybe pick up something out of the shop. Next you could see um, and my Shire Con pin is there that I already said. So then I'm next in line uh, so I've covered Shire Con page, uh, Rising Phoenix, AutoCon. So AutoCon is up over here in the far right hand top corner and uh, last time I went there I got this. I think it's a sticker. I'm not even sure. I can't peel it off but it's like a little pog kind of uh, thing that's uh, thinner than a regular pog but it's, uh, but it's a laminated uh, piece of paper. Um, could be a sticker. I'm not sure. Uh, along with a dice bag, which is really nice, and a little figure. We got different figures this year. That was from the first year that I went to AutoCon, uh, which it's in its... Uh, I didn't start going to that until it's like third year or so. It's a local con for me in my own hometown. It takes me seven minutes to go there. So it's always going to be on my list to go there and to run at least one session and possibly play in one session. Um... This past year, it was a great experience as well. And, uh, and then we get to the new one that is going to be on my list, all right, is, uh, is Central New York RPG Con. So that is also in June. Um, that is about, uh, that's in, in New Haven, New York, all right, not to be confused with... Uh, with Connecticut, New Haven, New York, it's near Utica or just on the outside of Utica. So it's about a three hour drive for me. I will be, you know, staying overnight. I already submitted my game submissions uh, that I will be running. So I'll be running three games there. And I'm really looking forward to the swag that comes out of there. So, um, so I think it's really important for, um, you know, for conventions to give out these little items and tchotchkes and stuff on top of the t-shirts and everything, which are great as well. But, um, but these things here are easy enough to put in a little box as I have it. And, um, and, and just really, really great, um, you know, great things to remember your experience from at the table. And then, um, and everyone at the convention sees you with these things and um and even outside the conventions you know like what we are doing with these youtube channels hopefully is that we keep on promoting the hobby all right and by uh doing these uh these previews you know and uh, and uh, boosting the signal for conventions especially our smaller local conventions um, we're promoting the hobby as well, and, and that's something that I always try to do with my channel. I just want to do a, a side note here, um, and, and not to make Shire Khan stand out uh, any more, you know, than I already. It is my first convention. It's my favorite convention, a uh, local convention, because it is so close, and it's it's a, a great great experience that I've had, but. Um, they gave out this year um, these uh, pledge coins, all right, and uh, really, really, uh, or challenge coins, I should say. It's a challenge coin, and uh, it really brings me back to my, my military background, you know, and I was like, you know, this is a cool thing. It just reminds me of that, and, and just imagine, like, if you're not sure what a, a challenge coin is meant to be, it's like, if you display a challenge coin to someone that you expect is uh, what would also have one and then they, they produce it there. You kind of know that you're in the same 
you know, the same community, the same club, the same whatever. And, and so challenge coins are usually earned, um, you know, for various things. And, and like I said, it, it brings me back to my military days, you know, and one of the first challenge coins I received was this United States Army Reserve challenge coin. I got this uh, as a PFC, all right, uh, and uh, this was uh, uh, when I was with the 364th uh, Area Support Group out of Fort Tottenham, Queens. Uh, this is once I was in my reserve unit there, and um, I received this from my commanding officer, uh, Colonel Bruce W. Casca, uh, for um, a 36-hour duty that I had performed uh, that um, you know, wasn't supposed to be on a 36-hour shift. That was only supposed to be on a 24-hour shift, but I ended up filling in for someone um, who, uh, who went to the infirmary was sick. And so I ended up being the Colonel's driver. And, uh, you know, once he realized that it was like, holy crap, this guy has been on duty for 36 hours. Um, you know, he gave me at the end of the, uh, at the end of the FTX, it was a field training exercise. Um, he gave me this coin to commemorate my service, you know, as his, his personal driver and aide. Uh, during that time and for pulling such a uh, extraordinary service. Um, the second one that I got was when I graduated from the Quartermaster School in Fort Lee, Virginia, and uh, we all received a Quartermaster's Challenge coin, all right, and uh, it has all of the different, uh, all of the different uh, actions and, and wars and, and such that the Quartermaster Corps uh, took in place starting with the American Revolution, the War of 1812, the Mexican War, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam conflict, uh, Grenada, the invasion of Panama, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Haiti, and Somalia. So, um, you know, and, and I, of course, served between the Saudi Arabia Kuwait, Haiti, and Somalia time frame, all right, um, didn't, you know, Iraq would have came in there, uh, you know, at the very, very tail end of my service, um, although they consider that Saudi Arabia, I don't know why it didn't specifically mention Iraq at that point. And then finally, my last one, I received from a, um, Again, because of, you know, the Quartermaster Corps and uh, when I made, uh, when I made E5, um, a, a captain who was actually a, uh, a Quartermaster Corps captain who was, uh, who was also an Army Ranger uh, and, uh, and an Airborne Ranger. So he was like the epitome of what you would, uh, you know, what we used to you know, march to and chant to in, in the cadence, you know, um, I want to be an airborne ranger. Well, here this guy was, and he was in the quartermaster corps as well. Uh, and so he gave me this challenge coin, all right, which is a, an airborne army quartermaster coin. And, uh, you know, good to the last drop, all right. The world is our drop zone, you know, so uh, he gave me this. Uh, because I was working, you know, very closely with him during a, uh, during again, another uh, field operation. And um, my performance during that, uh, during that operation not only earned me an Army Commendation Medal, which was really quite high, um, medal to earn, uh, and, and that was just before I became, a, actually that was before I became an E5, but he gave me this when I was an E5. Um, so I was a spec four when I earned that. And, um, and then when we got back to our unit, he presented me with this coin. So um, challenge coins are a really cool thing uh, to get at, uh, at conventions. And, uh, and hopefully others kind of pick up on the idea of giving that because it's, it's something that when we go the following year, we can, we can produce them and, and show them off to each other and everything. And, um, really a great experience 
to receive these as well. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, convention swag, I think it's really important. Um, I wish I had started collecting more of it when I started going back to conventions in, uh, in 2022, 2023. Um, I just have a couple badges here and there, but they usually get like a whole bunch of stuff with stickers and all kinds of things and uh, little figures. And I'm gonna keep them in my black box here and rearrange how some of the pins go on here. Um, I really like pins because they go onto the box you know, easily. Um, and uh, and the badges are nice to keep as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, get yourself out to conventions and really start to explore uh, different parts of the hobby uh, that you might not have done beforehand. I just did a live stream last night talking about this very thing of playing new game systems that you've never played before, running new game systems, or running for the first time uh, as well. Uh, and, and to me, convention space is the best place to do that kind of thing. And so that kind of prompted me to, hey, let's, let's talk about and do a video on convention swag and why it's an important thing to promote the convention and the hobby as a whole. So um, as always, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention sometime soon. Page two is coming on up in January, and um, I'm looking forward to having Ron, uh, who organizes the whole thing, back on the channel as well. Um, I'm going to have Roger, who is organizing the Central New York RPG Con. Uh, he will be on my channel on, uh, on the 26th uh, at 12 noon, so that's a Saturday, 26th, 12 noon. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about that convention and what it, you know what's entailed in starting up a convention. Uh, so really looking forward to uh, chatting with him and uh, and giving you the opportunity to see all the details about that new convention. That's a brand new inaugural year uh, convention right here in uh, they call it Central New York, but I, I mean it's pretty darn upstate uh, even for me. I guess they call the as you get closer to Ohio, that central and, you know, Watertown is like upstate uh, when you get closer to Canada. But anyway, um, you all have a great one. Thanks for stopping in and take care.